People have been debating since around the time of the ancient Greeks. But the modern idea of formal debates has been around since the 18th century. Debating societies began in London and they were places where the public could take part in and witness discussions about important issues and problems. Things like slavery, poverty, and what to do with the incredible amount of horse dung on the streets of the city of London. <laughs> These days, debates are mostly associated with parliaments in various parts of the world. Debates are useful because instead of calling each other names or fighting with one another or even going to war, we can sit down, have a reasoned discussion or debates, even if we disagree with one another. However, unfortunately, this doesn't always work out. However, debates usually work out as long as we follow a few rules. Number one, there's a clear order of speakers in a debate. This means you speak in turn, and if it isn't your turn to speak, keep quiet. Maybe someone should remind this debater about no interrupting. And Donald supported the invasion of Iraq. Wrong. That is absolutely Wrong. proved over and over again. Wrong. He actually had. Number two, the way you respond to an argument is by giving a rebuttal. But remember, wait for your turn. Number three, because you are responding to arguments, you'll need to have a pen and paper during the debate so that you can take notes on what the other team's arguments are. In a debate, we need a topic, we need something to talk about. So, in a debate, we call this the resolution. Our resolution today is homework should be banned. This is the thing that the two teams are gonna talk about today. So, we've got our two teams here. We've got the affirmative team and the opposing team. The affirmative team agrees with the resolution. They think, yes, homework should be banned. The opposing team disagrees with the resolution. They think that no, homework should not be banned. So, let's listen to the first affirmative argument for this resolution. Well, our first argument is that students are lazy and shouldn't have to do any extra work at home. This is a bad argument. It's a bad argument. Why? Because it's a weak argument. It's weak because it's not logical. What do you mean all students are lazy? This isn't something we can prove. Let's listen to the opposing team's argument. Our first argument is that homework encourages students to work independently. This is a great argument. It's great because it's logical. We can prove that homework makes students uh, work independently, so this is a great, strong, logical argument. So, in conclusion, we've got three terms. We've got resolution. This is the topic that the two debating teams discuss, that they talk about. And then we've got the affirmative team and the opposing team. The affirmative team agrees with the resolution. The opposing team disagrees with the resolution. And remember, your arguments need to be strong. They need to be logical. 